Hey, what's up, Algebra? It's Mr. Knight again. I hope you guys had an awesome fall break. Um, we're going to go over some stuff that you might have forgot over the break, um, and we're going to be able to redo some of those homeworks, okay? So this paper, of course, it's not homework, but it's for practice before you reattempt your homework, okay? So we're going to start on this side, which is like simplifying like terms, so our level 5 side. Um, and we're not going to do all the problems, but I'm going to pick out couple here and there that I think might give you a hard time, okay? So uh, really, like terms, remember, you can add and subtract the numbers in front um, if they are the same variables and exponents, right? So like 2x squared and 3x squared, that's an example of like terms. Both have the same variable and they both have the same exponent. So I could do 2x squared plus 3x squared and get 5x squared. So let's see what that'll look like with number 9. Number nine, we, uh, again, starting out these problems, I always start with my first term, and then I think, all right, what can I combine? I got this negative 2a or minus 2a and this minus 5a. So I do 9 minus 2 minus 5, okay? So that's basically 9 minus 7, which is just 2a, right? And then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to cross those off so that they can just, you know, get out of there. I don't want to see them anymore. And then we have 8 minus 3, and then that is just going to be plus 5. And that's it. That's as simplified as we can get. I cannot do 2a plus 5. They are not like terms. Number 12, what about something like this? Now it's a little crazier, um, and now we just have variables with no numbers out in front. Remember, what does it mean, what does it mean when we don't have a number out in front? Well, it's implied that there's just a 1. So this is 1f and 1f, okay? So again, start with negative 5f. I know 1f plus 1f and plus 1f are like terms. So negative 5 plus 1 plus 1, that is negative 3f. See you later. And now we have negative 7g minus 5g, um, and those are the only ones I can combine, so that'll give me negative 12g, or minus 12g, and then finally we just have this minus 4, just kicking it over here on the side, and we are done. Okay, so let's see it again. Now let's see it with 17, where we have multiple variables together, okay? So you can have a squared, b squared, and that's technically a term, um, and you've got to find for 6a squared, b squared, what other terms have a squared and b squared? Well, this negative 1 a squared b squared does. And that's about it. That's all we got. So it's just 6 minus 1, which is 5, a squared b squared. Smell you later, dude. And we have 3ab squared minus 4ab squared. That is minus 1ab squared. And we are done. Right? They have the same variables, but the a is not squared in both of them. So you can't combine them. Okay. And then finally, let's look at something like number 20 because I want to give you guys a chance to retry that uh, extra credit problem on um, level 5 homework. You can retry it. Um, some of you guys were super close. And uh, I think some of you guys just, I don't know, you saw like y minus 4 or something with a negative and that kind of threw you off a little bit. Um, again, perimeter, we're just adding up all the signs. Okay. That is all we're going to do. We're going to do 3y plus 5 plus 6y plus y minus 4. Now we treat this exactly like we would have worked something like up here. Okay? So we have 3y plus 6y plus 1y. That'll give us 10y. And then we have 5 minus 4, which is just plus 1. And that guy's done. So I'd like you guys to uh, try it on your extra credit problem that has something like this, the rectangle problem, okay? I think you guys can get another crack at it, um, and yeah, good luck on that one. So let's go ahead, let's flip the page now. So that was level 5. It's good to just get a little extra practice, and I want you guys to practice this in class after we're done um, until you feel comfortable to retry your homework, okay? So let's look at it. level 6 now. Um, this is solving two sub equations, which is probably what uh, most of you are struggling on, and for good reason. It's not the easiest thing, but I'm going to try and make it easier. Okay? When we're solving, remember, what you do to one side, you do to the other. 
Okay, that's not just an annoying thing to say. It is crucial here. Um, so let's go through one through five real quick. Okay, and I'm just going to write down what I got to do to both sides. Okay, so number one, I have y minus 17 equals negative 37. I need to add 17 to both sides to solve this. I'm not even going to solve it. I'm just going to say add 17 to both sides. Done. Number two, right here. Well, now we have a negative 12 plus k equals 18. To get rid of that negative 12, I need to add 12 to both sides. So add 12. Okay? Number three, we have 5 times m equals negative 20. Right? They're next to each other. They're being multiplied. Okay? The opposite is to divide, <coughs> divide by 5 to both sides. And then we'd be done. You just have to do your negative divided by a positive. You get a negative 4 out of that. Number 4. Okay, now we're doing x divided by 9 equals 3, which is different looking than something like this where we're going to have to use the reciprocal. Okay? So if we're dividing by 9 here, I need to multiply 9 to both sides. Multiply by 9. Done. And this one right here, like I said, we need to use the reciprocal, and we always multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of this guy would just be the flipped version of a fraction, which is just 5 fourths. Yep, multiply by 5 fourths to both sides. That's how you'd solve all those, and those are just one-step problems. Now let's see it with number 6. Let's actually work this one out. I'm still going to write up here what I was doing, right? Well, if we have two steps... Get rid of your addition subtraction first, and then do your multiplication division. All right? So right off the bat, I have 3p minus 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And this time, I'm actually going to show that. I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equal sign. When I say both sides, I mean both sides of the equal sign. Okay? Just to clarify that. So these guys go to 0, and I'm left with 3p equals 15. And again, now we have a problem that's just like this one, right? So we divide both sides by 5 here. We're going to divide both sides by 3 here. Okay, so if we do that, again, the 3s will cancel, and I'm left with p equals 5. And we are done. We actually solved that guy this time. All right, let's see it with number 8. Same problem. I mean, different numbers, of course, but same idea, except now we just rearrange the variable and the adding subtracting part. So this is positive 31 minus 12n equals 211. What I would do right off the bat is get rid of that positive 31 by subtracting 31 from both sides. So we're going to subtract 31 first. When I do this, when I do this, that negative 12n or that minus 12n, that doesn't change, right? We're just getting rid of, rid of this 31 right here. So I'm still left with negative 12n equals 211 minus 31, which will give me 180. And now, again, we're back to what we did for number 6. This time, we're going to divide both sides by negative 12. I'll write that to the side. I encourage you to do the same if you haven't been. So n will equal 180 divided by negative 12. Uh, off the top of my head, I believe that is negative 15. All right. And there we go. So if it, if it helps you, and, and really you don't need to do this for your problems, but I'm writing this up to the side so I can show you, at least on your note sheet, what you got to do. Um, Two-step equations are just two one-step equations, right? So if you can master these, you're not going to have too hard of a time with this, barring like signs. Signs kind of throw us off, right? Let's try, uh, let's try two more. We're going to try 14 and 17. Uh, we're going to try 14 because, well, we got this 4 fifths h. We're probably going to have to use reciprocal, right? Okay, so we have 11 equals 4 fifths h minus 1. So I'm going to, of course, focus on the side that has the variable, just like we've been doing over here. This time the variable's on the right-hand side. So again, minus 1, I want to get rid of it. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'm doing the opposite. 
Okay, I'm going to add 1. Then here, again, we want to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 5 over 4. Okay, so when I do this, I might want to do 12 over 1 first. It's going to look, it's going to look a little weird, okay? But again, the 5 fourths and the 4 fifths cancel. I'm left with h on this side equals, well, I have 5 times 12 is 60 over 4. And if I do 60 divided by 4, then I get 15 equals h, or h equals 15. Either way, it's the same thing. And finally, we have something like 17 and 18. Now we have this entire thing, this entire expression part, that is being divided by something. Now, when we encounter these, do the easier thing. I would multiply both sides by whatever you're dividing by, right? So for here, I would go ahead, I would multiply both sides by negative 2. I'm going to rewrite it. And if I multiply both sides by negative 2, I get rid of the negative 2's here. I'm left with n plus 4 equals negative times a negative is a positive 18. And then finally, the last thing i got to do is subtract both sides by 4. All right. So I want you to try that same idea with 18. And remember, if you've mastered level 5 already, then focus on level 6. If you've mastered level 6, focus on level 5. If you haven't mastered either, this is your chance to work on this sheet, get some confidence back, let me help you work with your group mates, and let's go ahead and we'll redo the homework, okay? This is Mr. Knight, signing off. It's good to have you guys back in class.